We're out at Thompson Sawmill today and we're going to obtain some white oak. Now, we don't need a whole lot out of this log to build this particular boat, but we may just build another work skiff out of this and it'll be a white oak work skiff this time out. So uh, we're looking forward to that too. But right now, we're just interested in obtaining a few pieces that we might need to make this total boat sport dory. You remember last week we were out at another mill and it was a little band mill actually, a much smaller mill than this, but still capable of sawing some very, very nice lumber. But this mill right here, now this is a real production mill. I call this a rotary mill. You know, it's got a rotary blade in it. And the major difference between this mill and the other mill is, is that on this mill, the log is on a carriage and it goes back and forth in front of the blade, kind of like a railroad car you know, and it trims off pieces as it passes the blade. And the other one, the log is sitting still and the blade's doing the movement. So that's the major difference, but uh, one is cutting a horizontal cut and the other one's cutting a vertical cut as well. Now, the mill is very sophisticated, much more sophisticated than you might think. And uh, it's kind of a takeoff of an old type of mill that you had a big lever and a clutch that would make the log move back and forth, but then the dogging was all done by hand. But uh, this one here, all the dogging and all the rolling of the log and the shimming of it and everything else is all done from inside that booth. And there's a massive amount of controls in there. How in the world anybody would ever understand all of that is beyond me, but this mill here is handling all kinds of different cutting operations. They're cutting large timbers for large buildings. They make pallet lumber on order. One buys really nice dimensional lumber, two buys all kind of stuff for furniture people that has to be gone and put into kilns afterwards because really quality lumber. Every kind of lumber comes out of this mill and it comes out of here fast. I'm going to take you out back and take a look at a few white oak logs in a pile back there and uh, show you what I'm thinking about when I pick some of these logs out. You know, some of the logs, what's good about them, what might not be good about them, and uh, it'll be kind of interesting. So let's go back aft there and take a look at that. Now I'd like to just show you this uh, log right here. Now this is a white oak log. You can tell by the color of the bark and the flakiness of it and everything here. And uh, it's a swept log. It's not straight at all. It's not the log that I want to purchase today. But a log like this is very useful in boat building for like covering boards for like say a Hereshoff or something that's got nice bright oak covering boards because this grain in this log would follow the sweep of the boat right around so that you wouldn't have to have slab sawn grain uh, for a covering board on a boat like that. Now, I'm not gonna buy this particular log because it's got most of that sweep in one spot right in the middle and I'm gonna be looking for a log that's got more consistency to that sweep and maybe not as many bunches of different things in it and, uh, and I'll purchase a log like that for sure. And those humps, there's gotta be knots and imperfections inside there. Well, I did, I did look at this log right here for my purposes and uh, it's available to me, but uh, I've decided not to uh, purchase it. It's got some bunches in it right here. We call these bunches. It's probably uh, an area where there was a branch broken off and now the bark has grown right over it. Looks like it gets a little worse as you go down here in between these two logs. Now, it's got other bunches in it, some in here and like a large bunch right up in here. So even though that's a very, very nice log and it's fairly straight, I'm just a little worried about it sawing up to be very, very clear lumber. So it could have quite a few knots in it and you just never know about these logs until you open them up what you're gonna, what you're gonna find. So you have to uh, go by every single bit of information you can use. And I'm looking for a log that's just as straight as can be and as smooth as can be without any of these bumps or anything in it like this. And I think I've picked the log out in another pile down the way here. Now this is a log that I've decided to purchase now. It's quite a long log and it's fairly large in diameter. I'm looking for material right out of here like this, quartered material with the annual rings going across it like this. And I'm going to have them saw the center of it into one bys and the sides of it into two bys. They'll be slab sawn and my quartered stuff will come right out of the middle right in here. Now you see this heavy checking in it right here, but that'll run out a little way up. Uh, it won't run past maybe three feet or so. The log's quite a bit longer than what I need, and that's the way I buy them. I don't want big checks on the end of the lumber once I cut a nice piece of lumber out of there, so a lot of this on the end is sacrificial unless 
it comes right out of the middle right in here. Now, as I look down the log on both sides, it's a very nice straight log, nice and straight. You don't see one single bunch or a lump or anything in it on the side here. You don't see any lumps on this side whatsoever or even on the top right here. So that log right there might have some mighty clear stuff in it. It's the opinion of the mill owner here and myself. Both of us looked at this log and decided that this would be the best log for me to purchase. And uh, I'm kind of taking my chances here because I buy these logs, what they call run of the mill. They're going to saw this whole log up. They don't want any of it. They don't want to sell any of it to anybody else either. They want me to take off with the entire log, and that's what I'm going to do. The annual rings in this particular tree that I've purchased, they're uh, maybe an eighth of an inch wide down in this area. Same basic thing right up in here, all the way up. It slowed down growing just a tiny bit right in here, but in general, it grew the same speed throughout its lifetime. I like that because I know that there wasn't too much in weather or disease or something affecting the growth of this tree. It kind of took off at one rate and it finished up at the same rate. Well, now I'm standing right up on top of this log, up on top of the entire pile. And this is not something that you let everybody do. Climbing around these piles of logs can be very, very dangerous. If they weren't set here exactly right, one of these logs could roll. And believe me, if it rolled over you, it would make you paper thin. So they don't allow people to do what I'm doing right now too very often, but uh, I've been around these mills so often that uh, I guess they feel as if it's all right now. I'm looking at this log. A nice log, real nice. This is the log I've been looking for right here. It's got that big, heavy, scaly bark on it, unlike a lot of Quercus albas. This is, I believe, a swamp white oak right here. Very good material, very, very good. A little bit different than some of the logs. Some of the bark you can see is much tighter and uh, the scales are much smaller, so there is a difference in white oak logs. That's exactly what I've been looking for right there. So we might have to buck this thing off up in here somewhere afterwards, but basically this is it. I'm only looking for 16 feet of material, and I think this log is 22 feet, if not 24 feet. Now this is the top end of this log right here that I purchased, and I just wanted to show you that it's got two hearts in it right here. One heart in here, and one heart in here, and like an imperfection in between right here. So you can tell that right here, or just above this, the tree branched off into two right here, and, and they can't have anything like that in the mill, so they've just bucked that right off right there, and that's just an indication that it was there. Now a foot or so down past that, it won't show those two hearts. It'll go back to a single heart. Now here comes our log now, and isn't it a beauty? I mean, this log is so easy to identify as a white oak log, even from this distance. Look at it, it's white. The rest of the logs beneath it are all red, so they're red oak logs, that's a white oak log. And uh, you know, I think I had said before that that's a swamp white, so it has a kind of a different, funny kind of a looking bark on it, but it is a white oak log and it's a really, really nice one. It's nice and straight and long. So uh, we're gonna pick it up from the log truck and put it on these ways here and it's gonna roll down into the debarking machine. And the debarking machine is pretty important around here because all of these logs get dragged through the woods. They're full of mud, they're dirty. There's all kinds of problems with them. And uh, what you wanna do is strip all of that bark off and never mind that, all the bark is a product actually. Not one piece of this tree goes out of here without being a product. It has to be either turned into pellets or some kind of mulch or something. But I'll guarantee you one thing, they don't throw any of it away. So once it's debarked, and that's quite a process, the log tumbles and this thing goes up and down the side of it, kind of like a chainsaw, sort of, with a big wide head. And it just grinds the bark right off and sends it flying. And, and once it's all stripped, we're going to send it inside to be sawn. Now before we can start cutting, I'm going to have a little chat with the Sawyer. Now he and I get along pretty nice because I've been out here quite a few times and he knows I know exactly what I want out of this tree, but he has no idea if I want to cut it into a timber or one-bys, quarter-sawn, center-cut, slab-sawn, 
So this conversation is pretty necessary. And uh, really, even though we're going to have this conversation and we're going to talk about what I want out of it, I kind of have to leave it up to him in some ways to get that out of it. So we have this little conversation. He's going to ask me what I want out of it. And we're just going to go over a few things. And uh, it's going to enable him to get out of it the best that I want. Now here comes our log rolling onto the carriage. Now you can see that he can roll this log up onto the carriage, but on the carriage you can also roll it so he can see exactly what relationship he wants it to be into uh, to the carriage or to the blade, let's say. And he can also shim the log in different ways. So the conversation that we had was all about getting what we call center cut lumber out of it. We don't want to quarter saw the log. It would be a little difficult and time consuming. I wouldn't get exactly what I want out of it. I want boards cut right down the middle of it all the way through or the best we can. And uh, that's what I'm going to get. And then he's going to roll that log up until that cut, the first cuts are down against the carriage and he's going to cut 90 degrees to that and he's going to cut some of the bell end off until he kind of gets going straight. So now we're going to roll it again and we're going to roll the second cuts down against the carriage and the first cuts in line with the blade. And what's going to happen now is we're going to take another look at it and start cutting the bell end on the other side. But I can see that as he gets cutting it, what he's done is he lined the center of the log up with the very first cuts. He made that decision very quickly. That happened really very fast. Great decision. So basically, I'm going to get center cut lumber right out of the middle of this log. A whole bunch of one buys and a couple of two buys, and I can do all kinds of really neat stuff with it. So I don't take a lot of slab sawn lumber out of a mill. I buy mostly center cut logs and quarter sawn pieces. Here comes our lumber on the forks right now, and believe me, it looks fantastic. I think I did a great job picking the log, and they did a fantastic job sawing it. So uh, I'm perfectly happy. I can't wait to get it back to the shop and start working with it.